Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, ends up posting the videos every Tuesday and Thursday, sometimes Saturday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today must be a Saturday because I have a book review for you guys, and it's going to be a two-in-one book review featuring two books from C.S. Lewis. So um, before I begin, I do want to say I want to just shout out um, Harper One for sending me these books. I had contacted them directly, um, and it took me a minute to find the publicist's email because I had to like Google it. It was a lot of work, but um, I did personally contact the company Harper One um, because I was interested in reviewing these books because a lot of you guys have been asking me if I read C.S. Lewis, mainly Mere Christianity and the Screw Tape Letters, and I have not read any of his works. I've been meaning to read them for a long time, but I just, I don't know, I felt like there was a wall between me and C.S. Lewis. Um, but I contacted them and told them that you guys, um, you know, were asking me about it and that I, I was requesting to review it. Um, they had a box set, and I'll put an image of the box set, but they have a box set on Amazon of the eight classics that he has out. And um, I asked them for it. They didn't have the, the um, box set, but they did have the bind-up. So here is the signature classics bind-up right here from Harper One. They sent it to me. It's from C.S. Lewis. There's eight books in one. So it's Mere Christianity, The Screw Tape Letters, Miracles, The Great Divorce, The Problem of Pain, A Grief Observed, the abolition of man and the four loves and these are all eight books that are inside of the box set these are the covers and the ones that i've really been interested in are obviously mere christianity the screw tape letters um the abolition of man the problem of pain and the four loves obviously i wanted to read all eight but those are like the ones that i was like super excited to read i have not read any of those books yet I am planning to read the screw tape letters, if not this month, um, hopefully next month. The plan is to get at least into the screw tape letters this month, the month of May, um, and finish it by June so I can read at least two more books before the summer is over. Um, but I'm going to be getting to this this month, prayerfully. Um, however, they did send me two other books. They're supposed to be sending me a third book, though, that kind of goes with this kind of collection. I'm not sure yet. Um, I do have to contact them because it's been a minute since I contacted them. Um, but I did read the other two books, finally. Um, and I have them here. So the first one is How to Pray by C.S. Lewis and it's Reflections and Essays. And then the second one is How to Be a Christian, also Reflections and Essays. And basically these books are sort of um, them taking bits and pieces of his works from other books and other sources that he's done, some known and some unknown, and um, putting them into one book under one topic. So How to Pray... I've read. I gave it four stars. I actually enjoyed this a lot. I tabbed it up. I did enjoy one chapter more so than the others, but I did get a lot from the other chapters, so I did give this four stars. And my favorite chapter is actually an excerpt um, taken out of the screw tape letters. Um, the chapter is titled, What are tips for avoiding God and prayer altogether? And it's from a devil's perspective. So how can I describe screw tape letters? It's basically letters from a master demon tempter named screw tape to I think his younger demon tempter named Wormwood on how to basically tempt a human. So it's giving you insight on how the enemy works. And I swear you guys, this chapter blew my mind with a lot of the things, especially when it comes to prayer. Because a lot of the times we feel like we just don't want to pray and we think nothing of it. But the way that they broke this down in four parts I, blew my mind. So the first part, it says to make sure that their prayers are especially spiritual. And I know you know some of the people that are like really, really spiritual. You know, I'm going to just leave it at that. You guys know what I mean, right? But, um... It says, whenever they are attending to the enemy himself. And when they say enemy in this book, enemy is capitalized with a capital E because the enemy is actually referring to God. Keep in mind that this is written from the perspective of a demon, of a devil. So, the enemy would be God. So, basically, whenever we are attending to God himself, um, demons are defeated is basically what this is saying. And it says, the simplest way is to turn our gaze away from God towards us ourselves so um people who are really super spiritual personally now don't get me wrong i'm not bashing anybody i don't want anybody to think that but i feel like those people that are like extremely spiritual don't really keep their eyes on god because they get caught up in religion 
Um, and I'm not a fan of religion. I'm just going to say that I'm not a fan of religion because religion causes a lot of issues. Um, a lot of arguments between Christians, a lot of arguments between Christians and Muslims, a lot of arguments between Jewish people. and Like, it, it causes too much problem. Um, and when you get caught up in being too spiritual, it reminds me of the Sanhedrins. I'm going to leave it at that. And if you don't know who the Sanhedrins are... Um, just think about the people back in the times um, that thought they were uh, above the law back when Jesus was around. Those people. And if you don't, like I said, if you don't know, read, read the New Testament. You'll, you'll figure it out. But I feel like when you become too spiritual, you, you're resembling a Sanhedrin in my mind. That's how I see it. I don't know if anybody will agree with me on that, but that's how I see it. But um, it just, it talks about how, you know, there needs to be a real nakedness of the soul in prayer. Um, because a lot of people are not naked when they're praying. A lot of people are just doing it for show. They're doing it to check off a list. And I'm not going to lie, that used to be me. I used to be in church praying because they said to pray. Everybody saying it and pray. Okay, I got to close my eyes and pray. That's what I used to do. But when I got to that point of having to pray for myself, wanting to pray for myself, it became a whole different story. And I still sometimes um, find myself getting caught up, especially in church sometimes. I find myself getting caught up. Um... And not being extremely vulnerable. But I do find myself sometimes getting caught up um, in um, not being 100% vulnerable in church. I don't know. I feel like I can be like extremely just me and vulnerable at home. At home. Um, but when I'm in front of people, I tend to let other people and other things kind of distract me a little bit from praying. Um, so then part two on that was believe you are not a very good Christian. So basically they try to make us believe that we're not a good enough Christian to pray for anything. Um, you know. And it basically says that all humans at nearly all times have some such reluctance. So we do always have a reluctance to pray. Um, and then it says the prayers offered in the state of dryness are those which please him best. So, you know, there are those people who pray only when it's good. But what about when you're dry? What about when you're empty? What about when you are weak? You know, what about when you're broken? Are you praying? A lot of people, we only just pray when it's good for us, you know? The third part is that... Um, we need to treat prayers as a test of God. So basically, the enemy tries to use prayer as a way for us to test God. Um, and that's not good. But a lot of the times, we don't see it that way. We're just praying things and don't realize that um, though sometimes it's on us how we pray, other times there are tricks of the enemy that he uses within our prayer lives. Um, and I, I don't know. This book just really blew my mind. Um but yeah, it talks about um, how does prayer become a regular practice for us, which it gave some, you know, really good practical tips on that. Um, what else? If our prayers depend on how deeply we feel or mean them. How do we pray while grieving? Uh, how can we get out of our own way and pray? Which I thought was such an impactful one as well, because a lot of the times we're in our, we're in our own way of prayer. Um, so I did enjoy this enough to give it a four stars, though I really only loved one chapter i did find that i was getting a lot about prayer from the other chapters which is why i gave it a four star rating do i recommend this yes i do it can be a little bit of a complex read um but i feel like if you take this one chapter at a time because i i've, I've read these one chapter a day because it was just, i felt like though the chapters were small they were very much heavy because it is c.s lewis and he writes in almost an intellectual kind of way um and he makes you double take reread rethink things over so i enjoyed this enough i definitely would recommend this and just from reading this i'm even more excited to read the screw tape letters so for how to pray by c.s lewis i did give this four out of five star rating the next book is how to be a christian by c.s lewis reflections and essays same kind of idea as the other one where they took bits and pieces from his works um published and unpublished stuck them together in a book and you have a book on how to be a christian Pretty much and i did tie this one up too um this one i gave a 3.5 out of five stars um i was debating between the 3.5 and the four stars but i am going with the 3.5 only because this was a little bit more harder for me to read um because of the wording and i felt like i had to reread pages and chapters like over and over again to fully grasp and understand it um i did enjoy three chapters particularly from this book um on forgiveness as a as a necessary practice 
on the appeal and challenges of home life and on the importance of practicing charity. Those three chapters of all the chapters blew my mind. Like, I literally got so much out of them. So let's... I'm just going to talk about those three chapters because those are the chapters that got to me most. So the one on forgiveness as a necessary practice... Um, it just reminds us that if we don't forgive, we're not going to be forgiven by God because we have to forgive others in order for God to forgive us of our sins. Um, and then it talks about how there's a difference in forgiving and then a difference in excusing someone. And then it says, forgiveness says, yes, you have done this thing, but I accept your apology. I will never hold it against you and everything between us two will be exactly as it was before. However, they say that excusing says, I see that you couldn't help it or didn't mean it. You were really not to blame. But then it says, if one was not really to blame, then there is nothing to forgive. So then it even goes further to say that forgiveness and excusing someone are completely opposites. Because in order to forgive someone, they have to be, um, there has to be a blame or something that they have done wrong. If you're excusing someone, then they didn't do anything wrong, pretty much. So you can't forgive someone if they didn't do anything wrong. You're just excusing them. Um, so I like that they make that known that there is a difference because I feel like a lot of times... We don't think about that. Um, we feel like excusing someone is the same thing as forgiving when it's really not. It's complete opposite of that. Um, then it says that God knows all the real excuses very much better um, than we do. So before we make an excuse, God knows that excuse. It then says that when we have got to take, what we have got to take to him, God, is an inexcusable bit, the sin. We are only wasting time by talking about all the parts which we can, I'm sorry, which can be excused when you then it gives you an example of how like when you go to the doctor and they ask you what is wrong you tell them you have a broken arm you don't go around talking about oh i got an ache here ache here um you specifically tell the doctor hey doc my leg hurts my leg broken you know same thing we have to do with god we don't just go to god with the parts that are excusable we have to go to god with that sin and um i just thought that was awesome um then it says in our own case we accept excuses too easily but then in others we do not accept them easily enough you know and then, what was the next one? Oh, the appeal and challenges of the home life. I'm just going to state this in one sentence. It says, in one sentence, which really blew my mind, I marked it. It says that the home life is difficult and has its own proper temptations and corruptions. That's it. The home life is difficult and it has its own temptations and corruptions. And um, the reason why I love that is because a lot of the times when people talk about the home... They talk about the home being a good place, you know, it's supposed to be a quiet place. It's supposed to be the place where you're able to re-energize yourself. Re-energize, is that the word? So it says the home must be where we retreat from the noise and stress and temptation and disputation of daily life to seek the sources of fresh strength and renewed purity. So basically the home should be a place of peace is what a lot of people believe. But for many of us, it's not because the home can be a place where um, there is a lot of problems. And another point that they make is that charity begins at home, but so does uncharity. And charity, we understand charity to be Christian love. And there was another chapter on charity that I loved as well. So um, the chapter on charity is called The Importance of Practicing Charity. And it says charity means love in the Christian sense, but love in the Christian sense does not mean an emotion. It is a state not of the feeling, but of the will. So basically, you're loving someone even if you don't want to love that person. You're loving that person despite what they did to you. If they hurt you, if they abuse you, you have to love them because that is your duty as a Christian. And a lot of the times, it's hard. It says that natural liking or affection for people makes it easier to be charitable towards them. And it, it this, this book itself... Um, I gave it 3.5 stars, and though I did enjoy a lot more chapters in this book than How to Pray, like I said, I found this one a lot more difficult to read. The chapters on charity, forgiveness, and um, the struggles of home life, I loved so much because it felt so real, and um, I enjoyed reading something different on that. Because a lot of the times, you don't read a book where it's telling you that home life can be a place of temptation, home life can be corruption, you know? You don't really learn that. You don't know that, um, learn that though charity begins at home you can also be uncharitable and learn that in your house depending on the people you're around and how you've been raised and stuff like that so um i i enjoyed this a lot i would have given it four stars but i gave it a 3.5 just because i found the reading for me personally was a little bit complicated um it wasn't that there were big words i just 
I found that I got bored. Um, honestly, I'm being truthful with you guys. This book bored me. <laughs> um, there were a lot of great points because you guys can see all the tabs that I have. But I got bored. More bored than when I read How to Pray. Are they both great books? Yes, they're both phenomenal. Anything on prayer gets me, which is why I gave this one four stars. I probably would have given it a five stars, but I'm going to go with a four. This one, just on how to be a Christian, though I love three of the chapters um, in this book, the reading was a little bit too much for me, and I'm being honest. Um, I felt like I had to force myself to get through the chapters, especially because a lot of the chapters were chunkier than others. Um, but nonetheless, both of these books are great reads. I definitely recommend it. I highly recommend that you check it out. Buy the physical book, buy the ebook. Links will be down below. Great read, personally. I think it's a great read. Um, and it's great just to have on your shelf. Um, I think C.S. Lewis, in general, is, like, a great writer. Some of his things are a little bit more intellectual. Um, and when I mean intellectual, I mean the way he writes can be a little bit more heavy. Is that the right way to say it? I don't really know if that's the right way to say it. But I did enjoy them nonetheless. Um, I am keeping these, obviously. Again, I want to thank Harper One for sending these to me. I really appreciate them so much for sending this to me. Great reads. Um, I will be reading the Shoe Tape Letters. Fingers crossed this month and I will have a review on that because I'm like extremely, after reading the section in How to Pray, I am extremely excited to read the Screw Tape Letters from Out of Here. It's, it's a big book though. I think that's what's making me hesitate is because it's such a big book. It's really a big book and I actually need to mark where I need to be at for this book. I think this is the Screw Tape Letters right here. Yeah, so this is where the screw tape letters begins. Let's see where it ends because you guys don't even know. No, it's not actually that long. It's really short, actually. Not that long. It goes from page 170, 180, 179-ish. I'm trying to act, I'm trying to estimate. So once yeah, 179 to page 296. It's not a lot of pages actually. It's, not, it's less than 200 pages. Um, so, yeah. I'm excited to dive into this. I need to mark this and probably mark it later. But, um, yeah. Do I recommend the books? Yes, I do. If I had to pick one or the other, I would say definitely get How to Pray. I think that one is the most useful. Um, again, I did enjoy How to Be a Christian. It just... It bored me. Um, How to Pray was a lot more interesting because I do like prayer. I love reading things on prayer and learning different aspects of prayer. Um, personally... But again, I definitely would recommend you guys get the books, try them out for yourself, check them out. Um, be it the ebook, the physical book. I'm not sure if there's audiobooks, um, but I know that there's ebooks and physical books that you can purchase. Um, I personally think they're cute to go on the bookshelf together. I think they're nice. There is a third book that comes out, but I think the cover is a lot different. I'm not sure if the company is still going to send me that book or not, because I know they mentioned it before. Um, but yeah. How to Pray came out June 5th, 2018, and How to Be a Christian came out. August 2018, can't remember the date, but um, they both released last year in 2018, and there is one more book in this kind of reflections and essays kind of series coming out this month, I mean this year, I don't know if it's going to be July or September, because for some reason, every time I look it up, there's a different release date, but I know that it's going to be this year, before the end of 2019, it's over, but um, yeah, that's it for this video, I hope this was helpful, I hope it made sense, I hope it encouraged you guys to check out the books for yourself. But other than that, that is it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!